Grand Teton National Park, Part 2, The Ecology of the Park Grand Teton National Park is home to an abundance of plant and animal species, some native species that have learned to live in the environment, and some invasive species that are taking over the environment by force. Over 1,500 species of native plants and animals make their home in the park, and approximately 100 invasive species can be found in the park as well. The Grand Teton area is part of the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Within the mountains of the park are contained many smaller ecosystems, notably the larger of the smaller ecosystems. These ecosystems encompass the entire park area, from the wetlands to the alpine tundra. Five big ecosystems exist in Grand Teton National Park. The alpine ecosystem, the forest ecosystem, the sagebrush flats ecosystem, the wet meadows ecosystem, and the lake or river ecosystem. The ecosystems are characterized by their location in the park, as well as by the plants or animals that reside within the ecosystem. The alpine ecosystem is located high up on mountainsides, in dry and cold conditions. Small animals might live there during parts of the year, but mostly migrate to the valleys during winter. Coniferous plants are best suited to the climate on the mountainsides. Occasional big game might wander into the area in search of coniferous consumables. The forest ecosystem is located in the valleys and lower down on mountainsides, and as a result are usually warmer and less dry. Harboring the most species of both plants and animals, this ecosystem is also the second most common ecosystem in the park. Larger animals such as bears or moose can be seen in the ecosystem, as well as tall coniferous trees. The sagebrush flats ecosystem is located in the valleys and can sometimes also be seen just edging up on the mountains, as the plants that live in this ecosystem do not require precise conditions to survive. Small animals live in this ecosystem, accompanied by the sagebrush from which the ecosystem received its name. The wet meadows ecosystem is located in the wetter sections of Grand Teton National Park, such as around lakes or streams. The wet meadows contain plants that are adapted for living in water, a high number of which are consumed by herbivores, such as moose. Beavers also make their homes in wet meadows due to the water table and the abundance of trees. The lake or river ecosystem is located in flat areas of the park, which can be in two places, in the valleys or in the canyons separating mountain peaks. This ecosystem is home to species which maintain life in or near bodies of water. However, the areas around them are densely populated with both plant and animal life. Plants in the park number over 1,000, ranging from the bearberry to the alpine forget-me-not. The park's temperate temperatures make the perfect conditions for most coniferous trees to thrive, and for other trees such as aspen and birch to live comfortably as well. Soil in Jackson Hole is loose and rocky, allowing water to seep through to plant roots. Animals in the park are not as abundant as plants, with approximately 400 known species. Due to the cold regional climate, bears, elk, moose, mule deer, coyotes, and wolves are present in large numbers. Most animals live in the abundant forests of the park, as the herbivores feast on the vegetation, and the carnivores in turn feast on the herbivores. The birds group is the most populous, with at least 300 members residing in the park annually. More species of birds migrate through the park, but don't stay. Common bird species seen include the harlequin duck, bald eagle, osprey, and red-tailed hawk. The mammals group is the second most populous with 61 known members, most of which stay in the park for their entire lifetimes. Several of the mammal species found in the park can also be seen in Yellowstone National Park, such as the yellow-bellied marmot and the gray wolf. The remaining groups are much less populous than the mammals group, and only contribute 10% of the park's known fauna. Most of these animals are herbivores, but some species of reptile are carnivorous. However, none of the reptiles are venomous. The food cycle in the park depends on the balance of the different species. Until lately, that balance has gone undisturbed, but with the arrival of more and more people into the area, other unwanted species have come in, some being invasive species that take over the area while killing off other species. One of the most noticeable invasive species is the white pine blister rust. The white pine blister rust attacks white bark pine and lodgepole pine trees, and while it does not kill them, 
it makes them more vulnerable to attacks from mountain pine beetles. The white bark pine provides food for several animal species such as the grizzly bear and Clark's nutcracker. While the blister rust covers a small percentage of white bark pine trees in the park, its effects reach farther than any other invasive species. The blister rust fungus is abundant in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and has caused severe damage to many species. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, if you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like or favorite, share with your friends, or you could even subscribe. And if you didn't see the first part of the Grand Teton National Park miniseries, I recommend watching it. If you want to learn more about some of America's greatest national parks, check out the National Parks playlist on this channel.